layering and glazing can be used to both either highlight or shade. They're a very controlled technique as opposite to wet blending or washing and uh, both can be used to create powerful and beautiful blends. They can also be used to create strong contrasts or just quick contrasts if you need to paint something very quickly. If you're like me and uh, you like to control where your paint goes, chances are you have tried one or both of these techniques already and I get a lot of questions on how to get better at either or both. Now there's a lot of discussion and disagreement on what constitutes layering and glazing and if you bear with me I will also explain where this is coming from. But first I'll demonstrate what seems to be the most widely accepted approach to both techniques. When layering what you want to do is uh, dip your brush into water once maybe and then just go right in and use a dilution that looks a bit like this. So you still have opaque color, uh, much pigment in it and you can wipe away some of the pigment and color if you want to have more translucent layers but this is generally speaking the way that you are going for. Layering can be powerful in two ways. One, you can apply light very fast in a strong way by applying pure layers of paint. Two, you can mix a lot of in-between colors going from color A to color B, typically losing a bit of saturation in the process but ending up with a smooth gradient. The theory is to apply less diluted layers to build up contrast and light and shadow. The more in-between colors you mix, the less visible the single layers will be and you will end up with a gradient. You can see me do this here. Putting in a more or less diluted layer of a 50-50 mix of yellow and white. Sometimes going in and also applying some paint to the edges, but the focus here is to build up light and you can see I am on my third layer and the light is already pretty intense. Now moving into the shadows, I apply an orange brown directly onto the shadow areas. And I'm also painting the kneecaps. You can see one layer, 50-50 mix of the base yellow and white. And you typically can see some of the edges where the both the layers meet. Second layer, more white. Just placing that highlight where it should be. And already painting the shadow. Counting the base layer, this is the fourth layer. And we're already on a good way. Now I'll also show you in a time lapse how to do it on a bit of a different color, in this case gray. Mixing in more and more white and just placing the highlights where they should be. Building up that gradient. Typically, the result is not as smooth as you will see later. But if you want quick contrasts, a lot of light and shadows, this is a pretty straightforward way to do that.
And again, you can mix a lot of in-between colors, but you typically use this technique to get quick results that are looking pretty decent. When applying glazes, you want to have less pigment in the color and a higher dilution. And you're aiming for something closer to this. And you can even add more water and dilute this down until you have a consistency that you're happy to work with. You can see I barely cover. Now when working with a glaze typically what you want to do is wipe off your brush on a piece of clothing like this just to get rid of the excess color like we uh, established. You want to control the color and you don't want it to run off your rush and creep into the recesses. Consensus on what is a glaze is that it is rather diluted layers of paint, but applied in a more controlled way than washes, which are typically applied over a large surface, and then are allowed to settle in the recesses and deeper features of a scalp. Typically, in the beginning, you will not see a straightforward result, but just stay patient leave every layer to dry and then apply the next one. If you're unhappy with how the result looks, you can take a darker color and just repeat the same process. This is the shadows done, and now we do the same thing for the highlights. First I work on the edge to set the frame and uh, clean everything up a bit. Then apply the first layer of light, and I'm already happy with this. Moving to the knee pad, I do the same. Patiently applying more and more layers of light. Again, wait for the result, don't be too impatient. The effect needs a bit of time to build.
you can see applying those thin layers gives you a lot more control and you still get smooth gradients compared to layering on the other side and if you're happy with the light situation you can start your shading and just do the same with a darker color Just the last layer of light on the edge to clean everything up and we're happy with this. Again showing you the other side of the shoulder pad too and gradually adding more and more diluted layers of color. You can see I barely touch the miniature and uh, you can already see that the gradients are much smoother and if you compare work times it's not even that much longer.
Once I'm happy with the lights, I start working on the shadows, just in the same way. bit of cleanup and we're done. Now why do I say don't get too hung up on theory when painting? I feel like painting should be an intuitive process not dictated by techniques because that narrows you down in your range of options. Stop thinking about whether this is a layer or a glaze altogether and switch between dilution ratios and pigment and color on your brush as the need arises. I'm showing you the knee pads I painted in the two I'm showing you the knee pads I painted in the two techniques before and I'm trying to both smooth the gradients out and get more intensity and contrast. Those are the three factors that should guide you towards your end result. Need more intensity, glaze over the area with an intense color, orange brown in this case. It will also draw together and smooth out your gradients. Need more contrast? Put in less diluted layers of color, maybe white or an off-white in my case, or a dark color in the shadows, maybe even mix in some black. Don't get too hung up on techniques and names that quote-unquote pros make up to impress you, or people make up to understand what's going on. I know that it can be intimidating and overwhelming in the beginning when you're trying to make sense of it all and you're trying to learn and get better and it's only natural to strive to learn tricks of the trade in any field that you enter but it's also important to find your own way and I swear to you that you will be a happier painter overall which is the most important thing in my mind because what good is a hobby if it doesn't make you happy? If you want to get more exclusive content about how to have fun with colors and miniatures and how to be a happier painter, check out my Patreon, there's a link in the description. For now, stay creative and until next time. They're very controlled. Uh, la, 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 la.